Hello, this is Gary Simon from GarySimon.net and DesignCourse.com, and today we're going to design this 3D tent in Photoshop CS6's 3D features. And this is a basic introduction to uh, Photoshop 3D. Uh, however, you can see we have something pretty cool going on here, um, in which most people wouldn't think is quite possible in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go to File New. Width 850 by height 600, and you can use whatever fits your screen best. Hit OK. We're going to give the background a light blue gradient. So for the foreground color, we'll select something right around here. Hold Shift, left click, and drag down. All right, so now we're going to change our foreground color to, to a darker shade of blue and choose the Ellipse tool. Hold the Shift and Alt key together, and then left click and drag create a perfect circle and then we're going to go to 3D new 3D extrusion from selected path now this puts us into the 3D editing mode so the first step here we're going to select the actual shape and under shape presets we'll select this one right here which is inflate now the next step is with this rule the 3D object mode selected we're going to rotate around the x-axis axis, right around there and then we can move it down slightly so it's actually hitting the plane alright and then we can select environment with this option this mode selected right around there all right, now let's select the object again, and we'll go to Deform. Now under Deform, we're going to adjust the taper to around 170%. And we're also going to change the extrusion depth to a little bit larger, right around there. Now let's take our Move tool and just move this up. Let me make sure we can move this up on the y-axis of course it's being a pain in the ass there we go okay alright and then we're going to select the cap option and we'll get the top portion working here so I'm going to scroll down I'm going to take the angle down a little bit and increase the strength right around there all right now let's go back to environment and I want to rotate this just a little bit more okay all right now that basically has a set actually I want to add I want to adjust the lighting up here so if you click this little icon it'll be somewhere around here and then take this ball you can see we can adjust the lighting here uh, right around there now let me select that again and we have intensity we'll go to environment and under intensity actually uh, yeah shadows right there we're gonna adjust this down just so it's not so it doesn't stick out quite as much alright so now I uh, we're gonna go to the layers tab and just select the background and as you can see here, um, it takes all the, we're, we're out of 3D mode. Um, and now what we want to do is just render it. So rendering t can take a little while, so I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back to it once it's ready. It usually, it, depending on your computer specs, it could take anywhere between um, uh, 30 seconds to a few minutes. So you do that under first selecting the object, 3D render. All right, so I'm going to pause it while I do that. Okay, so now I have it uh, rendered so it looks a lot better. Now we're going to give it some actual texture. So right here, we have two different options. And if we hide one of them, you'll see one's for the top, and then one will be uh, for the actual uh, face of the tent. So that's what we want to work with first. So if we all we have to do is double-click on this, and it brings up a uh, new, kind of like a new Photoshop document. Um, so what we want to do here is go to view show grid 
All right, so it shows us this grid, and it's not 100% perfect. So I'm going to go to Image, Canvas Size, and adjust the width to an even 1,000. And hit Proceed. And we're going to give it some red stripes. So let's select the rectangular, rectangle tool and choose a red color for the foreground. And we'll just draw in this first cell here. And then we will duplicate it. Right click and duplicate. Select OK. Move it over. D duplicate it again. And then I'm just going to merge these. Right click, duplicate layer. And then just one more time. Right click, duplicate. And there we go. Now if we switch back here, you'll see it automatically adds the uh, the red stripes here. Um, you can adjust these so you can even get more. Um, if we take these three, select them, hit Control T, and drag them in to right around here. Actually, maybe more like around here. Select Move Tool, hit Apply. You see we add a, a few more. You can actually drag them in and get more. But for now, we're just going to move along. Um, and now this is a little bit too gray. We want this to be white, actually. So with the uh, the object selected, actually, let me go back here, Control Z. We have Diffuse up here, and we can change this to be any color we want, as you can see. So let's hit OK. All right. So now, if we just click on select or click the background layer, you can see we have. Uh, the basic look so far. Um, I want to actually add a door here. So what we're going to do is right click on the ellipse and hit Rasterize 3D. And from there, we can select the pen tool, change the mode to path, and we're going to create a door just right here. We kind of want it to fit within the 3D shape as much as possible. Okay, so now we'll right click, go to Make Selection, hit OK, and then hit the delete, yeah, the delete key. So now we have the door here, but obviously there needs to be a shadow in here. So, and also this, we may see a portion of this wrap around uh, the actual tent from the door. So we'll create a new layer, Control Shift N, hit OK. With the pen tool still selected, we'll select Shape, and we'll change the color to an almost black. And we'll only see a very small portion of it, which is right there. Actually, we'll select black for that by default. All right, so now we can just barely see the other edge of the layer, and we can move this a little bit more. Oops, wrong layer. Use our arrow keys. And then what we can do is actually give AI a shadow in the center. And select the background layer, Control-Shift-N for a new layer. Hit OK. We'll take the brush tool and increase it to around 160 or so. Actually, I want to increase a little bit more than that. So, And then we can just take the lasso tool and delete outside of here. And then take the eraser tool to get rid of anything hanging off at the end. Okay, so uh, now I want to give it some grass uh, to circle around. So I've linked a free grass uh, grass texture. So go ahead to that URL and right-click the image uh, in Chrome or Firefox and copy it, copy image, which is what I've just done. And then select the background layer and hit Control Control V to paste. So now uh, we're going to take the eraser tool.
and just start erasing most of the grass here just to only encompass the portion around the tent. Okay, so this side, uh, uh, the shadow right here doesn't look very good, so we'll drop this down actually to probably around 130 and just uh, erase the very end of it. Now this shadow in here doesn't look very realistic at all, so we'll select it and change the blend mode and we can just use the down arrow key after selecting the, the drop down box and just hit several times until we find one that looks a little better. And I think I think uh, there was one that was pretty good up here. All right, I think that's pretty good. And that's linear burn. I changed the opacity to 75%. Also, there was some shadow up here. We can delete. Um, and now we're going to give it an actual flap. So we'll take the pen, that pen tool and we'll choose this color right here, just at the very edge for the foreground. And then we'll draw out a basic shape as if the, uh, the flap of the door is kind of in the wind. We'll move this up here. I'm hitting control Z if I'm not selected at a point that I like yet. And then we can always use this tool here, selection tool to move these around afterwards. All right, now hit control shift N and we're going to select this checkbox here to create a clip, uh, clipping mask. I hit okay. And we're going to select the pen tool and select this color right here, the very bright edge of the door just above it and we'll continue this red stripe down the center of the door and close it up. All right, so now the colors don't match here, uh, the actual tent colors. So what we can do here is hit Control Shift N, hit OK. We'll use the paint brush tool, change the size, change the foreground color to this color right here at the opposite end. All right, and then also we'll adjust this uh, so those match up to select the top layer, create clipping mask. Actually, we'll go back here, double click on this one and select the inner color. And then for this layer, we'll select the outer darker color and then along the outer edge, we can add the color. So now we'll take the direct selection tool Click once and adjust these so these line up perfectly. Oh, I still want to adjust this. I'm using my arrow keys. And we'll take this inner one and adjust it so it lines up better. Okay. Uh, we'll create one more layer as a clipping mask, and we'll give it some uh, some shadows here, an almost dark, an almost black color. We'll change the radius, and it'll be right around here. And then we'll change the mode. Scroll down uh, to darken, and then we'll just lessen the lighten the opacity. All right, so now that gives it an actual sort of shadow to make it look realistic. All right, uh, so the final step here will be to add some, uh, actually I'll just call them magic balls or if you will, but they'll just be uh, the paintbrush on a soft brush and uh, we'll hit create a new layer and we'll make it 100% white for the foreground. We'll start with the bigger size first And we'll drop down the size just a little bit. All 
All right. Uh, and then another thing I want to do is select the uh, original ellipse layer, Control Shift N, and create a clipping mask, and we'll adjust the size of the brush with a darker foreground color. I want a bigger size. And we'll change the mode, the blend mode here, to multiply and just down a little bit further. And then we'll take the grass layer, create a new layer, make a clipping mask as well, drop the size a bit, and we'll do the same thing. And change the blend mode. Uh, I think overlay, well, yeah, that doesn't look too bad. And that is basically it. Uh, so you can see we initially used the 3D, uh, the 3D features in Photoshop to create a basic shape. And then you can see we can really just edit everything to make it look uh, pretty realistic and 100% within Photoshop. All right, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And I'm Gary Simon once again of designcourse.com and GarySimon.net. Thanks.